Hey there, in this video we are going to look at longer number multiplication. So we will look at a process that allows us to multiply bigger numbers together beyond the numbers on that multiplication table from our 1 to 12 digits. So we are going to go ahead and start with long number multiplication, the process, when we have whole numbers, and then we will look at how do we multiply with decimals. So the product of multiple digit numbers becomes a little more difficult if you perform them in your head. So we use this process that allows us to multiply whole numbers and then again eventually decimals with any number of digits. So long multiplication we will go ahead and write one number on top and one number on the bottom, and we will line up the ones, we will line up the tens, we will line up the hundreds, so on and so on, just like we did with addition and subtraction. So let's take a look at these two examples. So first we're going to look at number one. 23 times 45. Notice I lined them up the ones and I lined up the tens. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to start with this 5 down here in the bottom right corner. So looking at the number that's right here, we are going to multiply that number by the 3 that's above it and then also by the 2 that's over here. So we're going to start with 5 times 3. 5 times 3 gives me 15. Now because this is multiple digits, I have to carry that 1 to the next column. And I'm going to put it as a little number, just like we did with addition and subtraction. So it's going to be this little number above the 2. So again, 5 times 3 was 15. We put the 1's digit here, the 10's digit carries. Now we do this 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. And then we have to add the 1 in. So that's going to be 11. Now, we, we have our 11. Our second digit is 1. Typically, you would carry the 1 to the next column. However, there is not another another column, so we just put 11 next to the 5 that was already there. So that completes that first round of multiplication, and then we'll move on to the 4. So now we go to the next number on this bottom number. So 4, again, we are going to take that 4 and we are going to multiply by the 3 and by the 2. So we are going to multiply across diagonally to the right to this ones digit and then up to this tens digit. So four times three is 12. Now, before we can write the 12, this is very important, you have to put a zero in this next row. So we're going to put a zero right here. Four times three is going to be 12, but we can't write the 12 in line with the five we have to put a zero there on this second round of multiplication. So once you've gone through with that first digit and we've moved on to the second digit, we have to put a zero there. When we move on to the third digit, you'll put two zeros there, so on and so on. So we are going to, obviously on this one, only have two digits, but we are gonna go ahead and put that zero there and then we can go ahead and use this four times three, which is 12. Again, because it is two digits, we have to put our ones digit of two from the 12 and carry our one. Now, there are there is already a one there. Just to make sure it's clear, I'm gonna cross that out. And I'm going to put another one because if it had been a different number, that's what you would do. So we have four times three gave us 12. We put the two down here and we carried that one to the next column. Four times two is eight. We have to add the one in. 8 plus 1 is 9, and that is our final column to multiply. There's nothing else to the left of the 2. And so now we've done the 5 and we've done the 4 in terms of multiplying by the 3 and by the 2. So once we've done that, we now do 0 plus 5, 2 plus 1, and 9 plus 1. Or in other words, 115 plus 920. So 5 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 1 is 3, 9 plus 1 is 10. Now, typically, again, we would carry the 1 in long addition, but because this is our last column to add, we can go ahead and put that 1 there. And so our answer is 1,035. Now, with 382 times 137, let's go ahead and set that up. 382 times 137. 
So again, we're going to start with the 7 right here. And when we start with that 7, we will multiply it by the 2, the 8, and the 3. So we're going to do all three of those. First, 7 times 2 is 14. So we put the 1's digit, the 4, here, and we carry the 1 of the 14. 7 times 8, when we do 7 times 8, we get 56. And you have to add the 1 in, which is going to be 57. Now, we can't write 57 here because that is not our last column to multiply through. So our 57, we write our 7, our 1's digit, but we carry the 5 above the 3. And now we move on to 7 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21. 21 plus 5 is 26. So we write our 6. We can't carry a 2. There isn't another column. So we just write that 2 with that 6, 26. Now we go ahead and put a 0 because we are starting the next digit. So we are now going to look at this 3 right here. And we're going to multiply that 3 by the 2, by the 8, and by the 3. If it helps you, for some people this is beneficial, to cross out those little numbers now so that you don't accidentally add them in if you don't need to. For some people that helps to do it now. Some people prefer to do it as they go. So that's just a personal preference. So we are going to do 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. That is a single digit, so we just write our 6 there and then move on to 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24. Now, if you hadn't already, you would want to cross out that 1 because that was from the last round, and it is not applicable here since 3 times 2 was a single digit answer. So 3 times 8, again, is 24. So we'll put our 4 in the next spot, and then we do have to carry our 2. So again, if you hadn't already, we cross out the 5 and we put our 2 down. So 3 times 3 now. 3 times 3 is 9, but we have to add the 2 in. 9 plus 2 is 11. So we would put the 1. We would carry the first one, but there are no more columns to carry to, so we just write it in front as 11 in front of the 4. Now, we are not finished with this one, so this one has a little bit extra because we have another digit on the second number that we're multiplying by. So we have to now take this 1 and we have to multiply 1 by 2, by 8, and by 3. So we need to put two zeros this time. So each time we go down a row in our multiplication down here, we have to add an extra 0. So the next one, if there had been more digits, we would put 0, 0, 0, so on and so on until you run out. All right, so 1 times 2, and I'm going to go ahead and cross out this 2 so I don't forget. 1 times 2 is 2, so I'll put that there, single digit, no carrying. 1 times 8 is 8, again, single digit, no carrying. 1 times 3 is 3, again, single digit, no carrying, and make sure if you hadn't already, you cross out that 2 so you don't accidentally add it in here. Finally, we go ahead and we add down the columns. So 4 plus 0 plus 0 is 4. 7 plus 6 is 13. Just like our long addition, we carry the 1. 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. In my head, I'm thinking 6 plus 4 is 10. And then I add a 2 and I add a 1, which is going to be 13. So I put my 3 and I carry my 1 again. 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 8. Again, because of the commutative property, I would do 8 plus 2 first and get 10 and then add in my two ones, which is going to be 12. So I put a 2 there and carry the 1. And then now we have 1 plus 1 plus 3. 3 plus 1 plus 1 is going to be 3, 4, 5. So our answer on this one is 52,334. Now looking at long multiplication with decimals. So long multiplication with decimals is identical to long multiplication with regular numbers, except for we have to look at the position of the decimal point. So when you write the numbers, you're going to ignore the decimal point. Some people will even read it with or write it without the decimal point to avoid confusion. That's up to you. And um, this also means that unlike long addition and subtraction, you do not need to align the numbers according to the decimal point. Instead, you align them just like you would um, with the furthest right numbers in line, then the next number, so on and so on. So at that point, you would perform it as we just did. 
And the important difference is the repositioning of the decimal point. So we're going to do an example to show how we would actually figure out where the decimal point goes in the end. So we are going to write this out 1.65 times 0 0.25. And if there's a zero before the decimal point, you don't technically need it there. So that's up to you. Some people will write it like this. Some people will write it like this. And just remember that it has decimal points. So where they're at and how many numbers to the right of the decimal point will come in play to tell you where those decimal points go in the end, or decimal point goes in the end. Um, so it's up to you whether you write the decimal points or not. I am going to leave them there, but it's up to you if you want to write them when you do the multiplication or not. So here we're going to treat it just like we did on the examples above. So I'm going to start with this 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So I carry the 2 after I place the 5 here. 5 times 6 is 30. I add the 2 in and I get 32. So I put the 2 and carry the 3. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus 3 is going to give me 8. Now I move on to the next digit. I'm going to look at the 2. Again, I'm going to cross out my 2 and my 3 so I don't forget to ignore those this round. So 2 times 5 is 10. Now, remember, we have to put our 0 here. And that 0 did not come from the 10 yet. So we put our 0 because this is our second row, our second round of multiplication. And we do 2 times 5 and we get 10. So we're going to have a second 0 there because of that 10 that we just got from this multiplication. Now we do have to carry the one because 10 is a two digit number. Then we move on to two times six. Two times six is 12. 12 plus one is 13. So we put a three here, carry the one because it is 13. And then we do two times one, which is two, add the one and we get three. Now we've run out of digits down on the bottom again, you don't technically need a zero here, but you could put it if you want to. But if you do zero times all of these numbers, you'll get zero. And so you don't really need to do that because adding zero into this set of numbers down here is not going to change your final answer. So we add down the columns. Five plus zero is five. Two plus zero is two. Eight plus three is 11. So we put a one and we carry the one because 11 is a two digit number. Three plus one is four. And then to figure out where your decimal point goes, what we do is we look back at our original problem, either the typed version or what you wrote out if you wrote the decimals in your numbers. And you're going to count how many numbers are after the decimal point total. So we see two digits here and we see two digits here to the right of the decimal point. Add those together and you get four. So our decimal point from the right side, we're going to move our decimal point four places to the left. Or in other words, you're going to have four numbers after the decimal point in your final answer because there were four numbers after the decimal point, point if you add them up between the numbers you multiplied from your original problem. So 0.4125 would be your final answer here. So in summary, we have our long multiplication process, which again, we want to use small digits um, above as our carrying tactic. And we want to make sure that we um, keep those small and cross them out as we go round to round to round of multiplication, just to make sure that we don't accidentally reuse them when we're not supposed to. Long multiplication with decimals, we want to count the number of digits after the decimal points in the two numbers we're multiplying to figure out how many numbers go after the decimal point in your final answer. 